all lectures and for all participants in this virtual seminar today. Let's say thanks to the Almighty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for his blessings we can attend and take a part uh, in this virtual seminar today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Arina Faila Saufa as a moderator today. I'm delighted to see you here and welcome to all of you in this bi-weekly forum that organized by Faculty of Adab and Cultural Sciences, UIN Sunan Kalijaga, Yogyakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker today is Dr. Yanis Dehani Farsani from Staatsbibliothek Zoo, Berlin. He will talk a very interesting topic now. It is about online cataloging and presentation of oriental manuscripts, the portal Palamos. Okay, I will give you a brief information or biodata about Dr. Yonis Dehani Farsani. Dr. Yanis Dehani worked since 2020 in the fields of Arabic and Persian philology and codicology at the Oriental Department of Stats Bibliothek Zoo Berlin. He was a known in classic visiting lecturer, visiting scholar uh, at Freie Universität Berlin in both 2019 and 2020. Dr. Yonis Dehani pursues his research on this issue of flexible textual tradition, floating text, as Muriel Roiland and Jacqueline Suplet call it, within medieval Arabic literature. During his time at Peking University in Beijing, Institute of Arabic Language and Culture, 2018 until 2020, he focused his research on intercultural relations and cross-pollinations between the Persian, Chinese, and Arabic cultural spheres in Central Asia at the 6th to the 11th centuries CE. Okay, uh, I think Dr. Yonis is already uh, joined with us though. So uh, hello, how are you, Dr. Yonis? Hello. hello, hello, thank you very much. I'm fine, thank you. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to hear that. Okay, before uh, the presentation begin, let me tell you how the presentation how the presentation will go. First, Dr. Yonis Dehadi Farsani will be invited to present the material. After that, there will be a discussion session and then followed by a conclusion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now allow me to welcome the speaker, Dr. Yonis Dehani Farsani, to make his presentation. Okay, for Dr. Yonis, time and screen is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be with you today uh, and to be able to present um, some ideas about our uh, project in, in Germany and also the portal Kalamos on which are, we are working now. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, some words were told about my background. I'm actually a historian and a philologist, but also uh, started to work on catechology um, when I joined the team in Berlin uh, to building up this uh, portal Calamus. And uh, at the end, of course, there will be the opportunity to ask the questions. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to answer in, in, in Arabic but I understand Arabic very well, Fosha Arabic very well, so the questions can be also asked in Arabic, but also English. And my colleague, Dr. Hanstein, who is basically one of the initiators of the project and one of the major members of our team, he's also available online, and he will also be able to uh, answer some questions to which I'm not able to, if, if there is th those questions, I mean. So now I share my screen and I start the presentation. So 
So can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Dr. So, Yonis. But, but not the presentation itself, right? Okay, let me start it again. So online cataloging and presentation of oriental manuscripts, the portal Calamos. Uh, first, uh, I would like to say some words about this uh, portal and the project which lies behind it, basically. The project is called uh, Orient Digital, or in German, Orient Digital, and is a project which has been funded by the German Research Foundation. The project has basically two phases. In the first phase, in which we are now actually, it started from two thousand. It started in the year two thousand twenty, and it will last until the year two thousand twenty-three. And during this time, we are supposed to make accessible the metadata of around. 22,000 Arabic, Persian, and Ottoman Turkish manuscripts, which are in various manuscript collections about in, in Germany. In the second phase of the project, um, there will be done the metadata of collections from South and Southeast Asian script traditions. This phase is still in planning. It refers also still to collections in Germany, yeah. And it is still in planning and we should apply for funding. So it's not like uh, sure now. Um, the major parts of, or the major partners of the project are four major libraries in Germany, uh, the State Library in uh, Munich, State Library of Berlin, uh, the research library in Gotha and the University of Leipzig. So, and these four institutions in Germany, they basically possess the largest collections of Oriental manuscripts. That's why they are the major partners. Now that was so far about the project itself. And this project, as I said, is supposed to um, build the portal Calamos. Now, before I continue, I would like to here switch to the um, switch to the portal itself. I would like to show you a page. Um, yeah, this is the first uh, page of the portal Calamos. It's not still online available to everybody, but I can see it because I will work with it. Um, so, but in my presentation, you will see some pictures which are from the older versions. I still kept that pictures because I think they are more um, recognizable for the people who haven't been uh, familiar with the portal. So this portal is basically still a work in pro progress. Of course, it works very well, and I will show you some examples later. But this is how the portal itself looks like. Now I switched my presentation. Uh, so first of all, a union catalog. The portal Calamos is basically a union catalog. And what is a union catalog good for? Especially in Germany, if you take a look at these pictures, here you see around 22 institutions around Germany, which possess uh, oriental manuscripts, larger or smaller. And of course, if imagine if a scholar is going to, for example, edit a work or, wor or study, for example, a work of which there is a manuscript, he must basically check all of these institutions. Most of the time, even he doesn't know that there is an institution with Oriental manuscripts. So basically, the institutions and the collections are scattered and hard to access. Yeah. Also, the catalogs. The catalogs of some of the institutions are very old. Some of them are handwritten. Some of them are in, not in German or in English, but in Latin. So this is basically this difficulty which um, leads to this idea of building a portal. Yeah. Also, 
um, some of these collections have already started digitizing part of their collections or the whole collections. But again, it's very difficult to access, first of all, because nobody knows about them most of the time. But also, there's not a um, clear way how you, you can access it. So you just try should write them and then they will say, send you probably via email or something like this. Uh, another problem is that some of these collections have already started to making a database. It means they have built basically something like a portal, but uh, just for them for the collection itself, and <clears throat> put the metadata of the collections of the manuscripts there. But these databases are isolated. So, for example, imagine this one and this one, and for example, this one, and so that's it. They are not connected to each other. And of course, the last problem that we have, as I mentioned, it's small, smaller collections. The smaller collections, some institutions have just, for example, 20 or 30 or 50 manuscripts. And these are not visible for the researchers. And of course, they could be extremely helpful for in their research. Yeah, if somebody, for example, is looking for a particular work. Now, that was the good things to, to build a... Uh, build a portal, a union catalog, but what are the difficulties? First of all, the difficulties are, is, one difficulty is various formats of metadata or lack of uniformity. It means that different collections have started cataloging their collection in various, in different times, and the quality of the, the quality of the data, the metadata uh, is completely different. Sometimes you just find one line or a couple of words, just the title and the author of the manuscript, nothing about the materiality of the work. How many pages does it have, for example, illustrations? What is the color of the ink and so forth? So various formats of data beta is a big problem for us. Also lack of high quality metadata, as I said, you just find a very short piece of information and that's it. Yeah. And also missing of standards, as well as a uniform way of recording the metadata. Basically, we don't have any standard how or which information, which pieces of information are important um, to know about a manuscript. So there's no standards. And as I said, um, in different catalogs, you find different things. So therefore, for these reasons, we have two main focuses in our project. First of all, we set a standard for us and we said um, we would like to have for each manuscript in all these collections in 22, which I, which I mentioned, and um, we, will we would like to have this information about the manuscript. The title must be there. I will go to it later. You will see it. And also the unification of the manuscript des description. So this is one of our major um, focus. The second one is linking the entries of each manuscript with authority files. Authority files basically are a set of data which involve various versions of, for example, a name, a person, name of a person or a book title. And they are extremely helpful for search. When a person, for example, um, types the name of a book differently from how it has been decided, for example, in the scholarship as the standard name. I will come back to this authority file, this point as well, later. Now you see here a scheme of the portal. The, here on this uh, side, you see the four major partners of the um, project. And this is also another institute, institution in Germany who are cataloging the uh, Oriental manuscripts, but they don't possess a manuscript themselves. But they are helping us to providing uh, um, standard metadata about the manuscripts. And on this part, you see the other collections in Germany. And you saw just on the map the place where they are located. Yeah. And hopefully at the end, we will have a portal and the user will be here and will be able to search the portal and look, for example, the works um, he needs. I will also do a search later and you will see um, an example. At the moment we have 
25 institutions are as cooperation partners. So it started with 22 now. It, rece it uh, yeah, received this number and it also probably um, it also probably uh, also other institutions will join us um, gradually. Yeah. And there are altogether 11 active researchers in Berlin, Gotha, Munich and Leipzig. So it's not just us in Berlin working. We are basically the, the, the largest team of the project, but we have colleagues also in Gotha, in Munich and Leipzig doing the same thing as we are doing in Berlin. Now, what are we doing actually, basically? So we have three steps. First of all, collecting the data. In our case, data means metadata of the manuscripts. So we collect the metadata of the manuscripts these metadata ideally are available completely in catalogs. You see here the, catal the catalogs of the, collect the Berlin collections, the collection of the ma Oriental manuscripts in Berlin. So we basically start working with the catalogs. But also if something is missing about the manuscript, which is very crucial, we refer to the manuscript and we check it in the manuscript and then we enter the information, all informations in the portal, yeah. Now, as I said, this is the older version. When I say portal, I mean in this page. Um, yeah, so after collecting, of course, the unifying, this is what I said, for all manuscripts of all collections, we would like to have a unified way of description of the manuscript, and at the end, of course, making it accessible. So, here uh, you see that we have some difficulties in collecting the metadata. As I said, the catalogs are not uh, in a uniform way. For example, some catalogs are here handwritten. So basically it's for me, for example, it's actually very difficult to read this. I should ask for, uh, for the help of other colleagues. Some some catalogs are in German language, which is, for example, readable very well because it's printed form. Some catalogs are in Latin. They have been um, they have been produced in basically 19th century, so very old catalogs. So the data that we are collecting and entering and inserting in the portal is not uniform. So this is the our um, here our task unifying the information. Here, um, I would like to now switch again to the portal itself and show you a, um, an example. When I say inserting information in the portal, what I, what, what I mean exactly by it. Um, So this is not the example actually I wanted to show you. For example, here I have here an example. Um, here you see a mask where we insert the information. In the first column, we enter the information about um, general data. For example, what is the class mark? What is, for example, the type of the manuscript? Is a multiple text manuscript? What is the catalog number and so forth? In the second, column, we enter the information about the physical description, and this is what we do about all manuscripts, as I said. For example, the dimensions, um, yeah, the boxing, the script, ink, what is the characteristics, and so forth. So the basically physical description. And then in the, sec in the third column, um, there's the description of the content, what is the language, script, the title, and date of the um, um, in which the manuscript was written, and uh, yeah, and then a short description of the content of the manuscript, and in the last column, uh, persons. So this is where the persons related to the manuscript are connected. Um, the author, if we have the scribe, for example, if we have previous owners of the manuscript, every, everybody will be linked here. So this is how 
we insert the information from catalogs. We basically gather the information from catalog first and for, uh, foremost, but also, as I said, from the manuscripts if something uh, crucial is missing. Now you see here a list. This is what I meant by uh, standardization and unification of the data. Here are the most important information that we need. If something other than this is missing is okay, it's no problem. But the, the owner of the manuscript, I mean, which institution uh, it belongs to, for example, the catalog number, how many uh, folios it has, and then the dating, if it's, if it's, of course, datable, the author, title, and so forth. So these are the minimum, these are the build, these build basically the minimum standard for manuscript description for us. And this is how we uh, unify the data. So the manuscripts, as you know, they are not just simple single texts. Sometimes we have multi-language, multi-text manuscripts. Here I have a screenshot of one of our catalogs. It's a uh, catalog of the Persian manuscripts. And you see here a um, how it's described in the catalog. So basically, a ver first a general description and then each tile, the title, uh, how it starts, how it ends, and so forth. How it looks like in the catalog, in, in the portal, in the online portal, it will be something like this. So each part has its own link. And I have here an example to show you. Um, this is basically the, the manuscript I, I was uh, just opened. So here um, you see this manuscript, this very large manuscript, one of the largest manuscripts we were dealing with, and this is, it took me, I worked on this manuscript and it took me around one month, basically. It has around 100 tiles, 100, sorry, parts, and uh, so you see here 89, but some parts have, for example, A, B, C, D, so altogether it's basically 100 parts. And if you just click on each part, you will see the information about that part. For example, who is the author? Uh, what is the title of the manuscript? Uh, what, what is this? Is the title basically Nafhat al Uns of Jami? This is a short description of the content, and in this case, as you see, we have also fortunately a digital copy of the manuscript. And for each part, if you click just on the on the image on the in this image, it will bring you to the beginning of that specific part, not at the beginning of the manuscript. This is extremely helpful. As you, as you see here, there's a very good quality um, picture here, and you can use it for your research. Also, it's available online, and you can download it. Yeah. What There's an important point I should uh, here mention, which is we don't host these pictures, we don't host the digital copy of the manuscripts. We just link, we just provide a link for the users to reach that uh, digital copy of the manuscript. And in this case, because this uh, manuscript belonged to the Berlin collection, that's why we have here a link to this. So if I click on this, you see that I will, um, I will be led to the website of the uh, Stadtbibliothek, so the State Library of Berlin. So, but we also provide a link to the digital copies if it's available. If I'm not mistaken, and this is what Dr. Hanstein can tell better than me, we will stay in constant contact with the uh, owners of the manuscripts or the owner institutions. And if and um, if they have, for example, um, a digital copy of some of their manuscripts, then they will tell us and we will uh, link them with the metadata that we provide here. So um, yeah, that was an example of a um, very complex text, a very large uh, multiple text manuscript or majmu'a as we call it in Arabic. And um, yeah, how uh, each section of this multiple uh, text manuscript is very simply um, um, yeah, reachable here with enough information to learn about. Now, um, so far I just uh, spoke about the collecting metadata in various catalogs and trying to unify them. 
Now, our second um, focus was connecting the entries with authority files. As I said, authority files, and I was told that there are in the audience, there are people from the um, field of library uh, sciences, so I'm sure they know better than me. Authority files is basically a uh, package of uh, data in which, in, in, at least in the case of the person and a title, you have various forms of that name of a person and that title. And that this is extremely helpful for the search because different people know a work, for example, are under different titles or the name of the authors, for example, are known in various regions, in various countries. Um, like, for example, me, I have, I, I'm, have, I'm originally from Iran, so, for example, some authors are known for us with another name. And automatically, when I search in a portal, I will enter that name. But that name is not necessarily the standard name uh, for that author. So, uh, authority files are extremely helpful for us not only for the search, but also for later connection of the portal with other projects, with other portals. In that way, for example, everybody knows that this person um, is connected with this set of data, and this is extremely uh, easy. Um, yeah. Additionally, so we just not connect the entries, we just we also improve the authority files because the quality of the authority files are not ideal in every case. So sometimes, for example, we just uh, have, uh, we don't have, for example, no version uh, of the name in Arabic script. And we know that some users prefer using Arabic script in their research. And of course, when, it, when it's missing, so then uh, that name won't be, won't be found. So then in that, uh, that basically makes us to improve the uh, authority files. I can show you also again an example uh, which I have here. The authority files, we import them from uh, the VIAF. I think this is one options that we have. There are also other other large uh, uh, yeah, large institutions who provide uh, authority files. But for example, um, um, just an example, uh, for example, um, yeah, we have here Al-Ghazali. Um, yeah, it's a good example. I think, or, for example. Here an example is Imam Al-Bukhari. And um, there are here different institutions from different countries. What is important for us, if it's available, is the uh, version of the name which the German, German National Library provides us. And here, when I click on it, you see here various names, various versions of the name of Bukhari. So no matter which version you will enter in the portal, in the uh, search box, you will find the name. Also in Arabic, so you see here also in Arabic there are uh, various versions. <coughs> Um, also, there are authority files for the title. Um, hello? Yes, uh, Dr. It, yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, of still, course. Yeah? Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, now I'll continue. So, here you, you have also, for example, for the title, like Al Jama Al Sahih. So this is also um, important for us. And you see here again, various versions of the name in, in, uh, in English and also in Arabic script. <coughs> yeah, and then, <coughs> um, sorry. <coughs> what we do basically, we <coughs> use this number here and we enter it in the portal basically in this uh, link here, and we connect it with the manuscript. And this is, as I said, extremely help helpful. In this case, for example, if you see my screen, we have here Shushtari Nurullah Ibn Abdullah. So he is linked basically with various versions of his name. And this is just one Arabic, but uh, so this is later. If, if there would be time, actually, we should also 
um, write the various Arabic versions, but now just this one is still also good. Yeah. So and then it's connected with the manuscript and. Um, yeah, it will uh, improve basically the results of the re re uh, of the search in the portal, and this is just one basically uh, advantages. Yeah. yeah, this is what you see here is is the older versions, and this is very basically as I just uh, showed you. We we just inter we just find that number and enter it here, and then connect um, the. Uh, um, yeah, the method, the, the metadata of the um, manuscript with the name and the title. So this is basically uh, some examples from the older versions. Um, here we have a, the, probably you know this work, Bustan is a Persian, famous Persian work of Saadi. So you see here various titles. For example, in German, in Germany or in German speaking world, there's also the title <clears throat> Lustgarten. Um, so if a person just types Lustgarten in the portal, he basically finds this work and he doesn't need to just type uh, Bustan. And also in Arabic, there's also another name, Saadi Nama, in Latin script and in Arabic script. What also we provide here is that um, if you find this title in, in our portal, then you will automatically be led to various manuscripts in the portal. So you will see in which, um, in which institution, which, um, in which institution you can find also Bustan as well. Also, what is the relationship between this work with other works? For example, we have here um, Kulliyat Saadi. So basically Bustan is part of the Kulliyat Saadi so you will learn that also there is this work in which the Bustan is available. And if you, for example, like to have all versions of the Bustan, for example, for, for an edition, you will know that you should check also the Kuliyat as well. So basically this is additional information for, for research. And this is an, an example of the uh, a name, Hatifi Abdullah, as I said, various versions in Arabic. And uh, also we provide um, if, for example, uh, we know about the somehow some relations between our author and other famous authors, we will also try to uh, provide this. Um, for example, here uh, we have uh, Hatafi Abdullah, and he is basically a relatives of uh, Jami, yeah, Nuruddin uh, Abdullah. So this is also uh, visible in the portal which I think it's very um, helpful for the, for the researchers. Now, um, so, so far I was talking about um, the manuscripts metadata, which we uh, manually basically insert in the portal, but also I uh, talked about the authority files, but this is not how we, uh, we try to basically make the metadata available. We just we also import data from other institutions. If you remember at the beginning of my uh, my presentation, I talked about um, uh, other institutions in Germany, which already have their own project. Here you see some examples, and I would like to show you also online. Uh, for example, this is a collection of manuscripts in Leipzig, Rafaia collection basically, and they had already their own project. So for example, if you uh, search here, I tried just a blank search, then you see here, for example, that they have their own collection. They have even also their own um, digital versions. So basically they are already a complete project, but um, uh, but we cooperate with them and we import their data um, uh, yeah, and make it visible in the portal. So this is another way of collecting basically the metadata. One, one way is manually and the other way is basically um, um, yeah, uh, importing the data from other collections. So they have, it seems that they have altogether 909 uh, manuscripts. Another project, for example, is the Omar project. This is a project of uh, um, 
I think more than 2,500 manuscripts from uh, Mauritanian. Yeah, and um, the microfilms are available in Germany. The originals, of course, are in the Mauritania, but the uh, microfilms are in Germany. And here, um, the a, a digital copy of the microfilms um, are available on this portal. But we try basically to join all this information together in the portal. Yeah, so that so that you don't need to know about these various projects. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, another example is the collections that we have from, uh, from in Indonesia. And I have here uh, an, an um, example. Um, okay, I can find it here. Here, basically, you see the list of the institutions with which we are working. Um, um, yeah. Um, Museum Nagari we have here. So again, I do here a search, a blank search to find all objects. Don't enter any specific name. And I have here 1,591 objects. So you see here, basically, I think the data are complete already here. And let's just take this work. The title is Al Hidayat al Salikin fi Suluk Maslak al Mutaqin. Um, yeah, and if you, you click on it, then you see uh, the information all are here, the author, um, the, the title, the content, in which language the work is written, and so forth, in which alphabet, and so forth. And also here are the um, digital copies available and accessible for everybody, basically. So this is basically another example of the collections. Um, yeah, um, which are available in the in the portal. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, of course, when you search in the portal, you can use the um, the advanced search, and you can uh, pick in which institutions. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the search will be just focused on that institution. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, probably I can I can try it later. Yeah, but here you have a uh, advanced search and you have uh, the choose the collections, various collections, and we have here, for example, this is just um, yeah Museum Nigeri, and uh, I don't know I don't know which, for example, um, works are available in this collection, uh, but just for example we search for if we have something from um, Bukhari. Okay, apparently nothing was found, so probably there's no uh, no book from, for example, Tabari. Okay, yeah, but uh, as I said, you can, um, because that's why I, because I just uh, confined their search to just one collection, but if we, for example, um, yeah, don't confine it, of course, we will find works from them, but I'm sure for, for Tabari and Bukhari, there are manuscripts in, in the collections, yeah. So this is, as I said, another way of uh, um, making the metadata available, namely importing data from other institutions with which we are we're, we're collaborating. Yeah, so far, um, if I would, I want to talk about the current results. So far, uh, more than uh, 12,000 entries uh, are available in the portal. As I said, it must be basically we should reach the number 22,000, but probably this number will be more than that because um, more and more institutions, uh, yeah, we, we contact them and they show their interest and to, uh, yeah, so that we can host the metadata of their collections and make it accessible uh, online. Yeah. Here, what you see here is basically the, um, uh, collection of Berlin. This is the last uh, statistic of the collection of Berlin. The project started in the year 2022 in the month of August and so far yeah you see here the numbers of the entries which have been um, which have been um, inserted in the portal over the last months from August 2020. Um, the outlook um, 
of the portal, uh, as I said, um, we would like more and more institutions and collections to join us if they are interested. Um, um, so we would like to have further private, but also other um, internationals, not just in Germany, but also international partners and projects. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have uh, basically already also, uh, yeah, except for Indonesia, also we have uh, the metadata of some collections from Austria and also Switzerland. Yeah, so these basically three countries uh, are also um, yeah, um, cooperating with us so that uh, we can um, enlarge the number of the uh, ma uh, me metadata of manuscripts we can basically uh, serve, but also yeah, make it more accessible to the, uh, to the users. Yeah. The project itself, as I said, it's not uh, um, accessible, this portal, uh, to everybody. Um, we plan that we will make it uh, online probably in the first quarter of the year 2022. Yeah. We have also a Twitter account. Um, two of my colleagues are supervising these Twitter accounts. If um, you would like to follow us, this is the page I have opened the page here. You can follow us, of course. We tweet about the uh, collections, various collections, not just the collections in Germany, mostly the collections we are working with. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, basically in English, but recently we decided to tweet also in other languages. So German, Arabic, Persian, for example. Yeah. And we have also a blog. Uh, this is the address of our blog. Most contributions in our blog are actually in German. So it's uh, basically the um, number of the readership pro probably will reduce here. But we describe basically the collections we are working with and also the um, some, some interesting manuscripts, for example, we are working with. So here we basically report about our, our work. Yeah. Also, uh, our, our work in this project in this team is not just confined to um, yeah, um, making the metadata accessible. We have also contact with other projects we basically recently organized a workshop. You see here uh, the advertisement. It was about the authority files I was just talked about. And uh, we learned a lot about other projects, the difficulties that, they, we ha that we, they have, the difficulties that we have, and we try to exchange our ideas. Yeah, next year will be another project, another workshop on the collections uh, of the manuscripts in Germany. Um, so this is how we try to um, stay in contact and make us uh, ourselves update in the in the field. Yeah, uh, yeah. So thank you very much. My presentation is now uh, finished. I try to unshare my uh, screen. Um, Okay. Uh, thank you very much okay. for yeah, Dr. Jonas you. for your informative and uh, interesting material today. Uh, that's very good. Yeah, uh, I think because uh, in Indonesia uh, also have many manuscripts. Mm. Yeah, uh, and also have uh, many people that have concerned or interested mm. to the manuscript. And uh, you have to know that in our faculty also have a study program about library science and history of Islamic culture. Uh, great, great. And we also have courses about philology and codicology. So I think mm -hmm. this uh, will be very interesting topic for us to discuss it. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, now are the time for us to discussion session. Uh, so, uh, 
I will let you to all participants who want to give your questions, uh, response, or comments, maybe to Dr. Jonas uh, about the material. Okay, you can raise your hand uh, and give your question directly by turning your microphone or your camera, or you can uh, also write your question in the chat, please. Okay, uh, any question from the participants? Okay, uh, you can give your question uh, with Arabic language and uh, also sure. English. Uh, and maybe uh, in Indonesia also, uh, we can yeah, give, yes. yeah, you can give your question for Dr. Yanis. Okay, uh, Dr. Yanis. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I you, have. Yeah, you I, get I, I, one question yeah. from, came from Tagrid, yeah. I want to ask about Mr. Yonis' experience in your experience of cataloging. Which manuscript has the most difficult level of cataloging? Uh, so, um, yeah, um, uh, I would, first of all, I would like to say that I don't, I don't myself have a lot of experience in cataloging manuscripts in its strict meaning. Basically, for me, cataloging means that you have an unknown manuscript and you try to identify the title, the author, the time in which it was uh, written, in which place, what is the script, and so forth. What we do basically in our project is that we collecting this information from catalogs. So um, we work mostly with catalogs and not with the manuscripts themselves. But as I said, sometimes we refer to manuscripts as well. Yeah. From my experience of basically dealing with manuscripts, let's say, it's not cataloging, because cataloging is something very, in its strict meaning, is something you, you, you must have as, as the, uh, as the um, tag, tag read, truly, truly uh, said, it's actually something very difficult extremely difficult. I think the most difficult part is working with um, collective manuscripts, mm -hmm. which basically have, first of all, different languages, so you should know the different languages, but also then recognizing the texts, if a text is complete or not. Uh, if it's, for example, broken, sometimes you just have a, a summary of an original text, for example, you have an important work and uh, the scribe decided to just code part of it. So you should decide which part um, of the original text is what lies, for example, in front of you. So, um, yeah, I think working with uh, collective manuscripts is the most difficult part to me. Yeah. Um, but also the single manuscripts can also be very difficult. Sometimes the the first page or the first um, uh, folio or the last folio are missing. And these are basically the ID cards of the manuscript. So if they are missing, then it's very difficult how you could decide. So you should know the, the content of the, on the, of the book or you should read, try to read. Of course, also being able to read various Arabic scripts like Nasr, Nastaliq, and so for sometimes some scribes didn't have a very beautiful um, writing, you know, so it's very difficult to, to read. Um, yeah, this is my experience, basically. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for your answer, Dr. Yunus. So, uh, Dr. Yunus, I think that the most difficult uh, for uh, cataloging is about language, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if Dr. Jonas find the different language, yeah, um, maybe in uh, another Germany or Arabic, mm -hmm. yeah, or English, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, can be a difficult for uh, Dr. Jonas. Okay, uh, we get 
one question from Nabila. Okay. Okay, please give your question for Dr. Yades. Okay, thank you, Miss Arina Faila Sofa. Okay, uh, I have a question about uh, manuscript. Okay, I saw many example about uh, many example brought by you, uh, mostly from Arabic manuscript, right? Yes. Uh, and my question, what about manuscript that use Japanese script or Hanacaraka atau Aksara Jawa? Can the manuscript uh, can the manuscript that manuscript uh, use kola kalamas in cataloging activities? Okay, that is mm -hmm. my question. Mm -hmm. So okay. if I'm uh, if I understood your question correctly the question is about the languages of of uh, of, of in which the the a manuscript has been written is it just in arabic or in other languages or other scripts probably you mean did i understand the question correctly okay if, if uh, not, i will try to help you dr yones okay uh, i Thank mean uh, nabila uh, asked about if you uh, see or uh, find the manuscript with the Japanese language. Uh, oh, okay. Do you know the Japanese oh, okay. language? Okay, okay. tradition uh, language in Java. Nah, uh, what uh, what do you uh, way to cataloging? Yeah, the process cataloging in yes. Kalamos. I understand. Okay, so basically the manuscripts which we host or the metadata of the manuscripts, I should say, better say, um, from from Indonesia, they are they belong to those collections uh, which we just import the data. So I myself basically are working only with the collections in Berlin. So that's why, because I don't know any languages from Indonesia, unfortunately, I should say, yeah. But we, I can show you, I think basically, uh, if I'm allowed, to, I can uh, share my screen again and, uh, and I um, uh, show you some examples. We do have um, um, yeah, manuscripts in other scripts or other languages. Uh, is it, is it uh, possible for me to share my screen again? I think it doesn't allow me. I don't know why. Um, hello? Can you hear me still? Yes, of course, Dr. Oh, okay. Yunus. It's okay, it's really strange because I cannot, um, I cannot share my screen. Anyway, but we have the opportunity in our in the portal, in the Calamos portal, to search just according to the language. So all, for example, manuscripts in like Arabic script in various languages or in other Islamic languages which use with the, with which uh, um, and don't use the Arabic script. It's very simple to find them. Yeah, um, because we have in the in the advanced search, this is the uh, this is the possibility. Yeah, but um, if the question is about the cataloging them, I'm not a specialist. Unfortunately, I don't know the uh, any languages from from Indonesia. Yeah, but we just import the data, and the data are there. And for anybody who can read the language, and also um, work with the language. Um, it's very easily accessible, yes. Okay, uh, so uh, there is no manuscript with the Japanese language in Kuala mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. True, true, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jonas. Uh, I think we can continue to read uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, it is come from... Fadlan, yes. okay, uh, can I help you to read it? Please, please, yes, okay. everybody can also listen, thank you. Okay, uh, the other question is from Fadlan. I have a question for Mr. Yanis. From your opinion, sir, what can be superior from Kuala Mus compared 
to connecting manuscript tradition other. Thank you. Um, uh, if I understand the question correctly, the question is about what is the additional advantage that the uh, Calamus with which uh, the Calamus provide the users other than just connecting the, um, connect, the connecting the manuscript traditions. I think, for, first of all, I think, um, as I said, and I myself as a person who's coming from uh, philology and history, it was very difficult to learn about the manuscripts in, in different uh, collections. I myself, although I, I also studied in Germany, I didn't know about many collections. I didn't know that, for example, there are 22 institutions in Germany that have um, oriental, oriental connections. Of course, the, there are just four with large numbers, but other small num numbers. So, um, so first of all, I think this connection, this connecting is very, very important. And especially if international partners are there, like for example, we have, as I showed you, several collections from, from Indonesia as well, which is extremely important. For example, anybody now around the world can have access to these collections, which is extremely important, yeah. And, um, well, additional thing is that um, I think the, um, the presentation of the connection between various works, because something, sometimes, um, sorry, my, my camera was off. For example, when we connect, when we connect various works together, if you have a major work, you know, and then you have a sharh. For example, we have a Sahih Imam al-Bukhari, and then we have sharh from it. In, in this, uh, in, in Kalamos, we connect them together. So if anybody doesn't know about the sharh, various sharhs, so he can learn about it. So basically it's also providing the reader with some sort of the literature or history of the literature. And of, but, but the number of the manuscripts is limited. It's not everything that has been written, of course. We don't have uh, everything, yeah. But this connection uh, of the works together and also persons together, as I said, yeah. Also, for example, we collect the metadata, not just for the author and the scribe, but also the readers of the manuscript, the owners of the manuscript. So for example, um, when we, when we, for example, connect an authority file of a previous owner, and then you click on it, and you see that this person had previously, for example, these 10 manuscripts, now they are in various libraries. So basically you can reconstruct the library of that person or the reader. If you can know that a person read, for example, these couple of manuscripts in various, in, in, which are now available in various places. So you can know how the network of the scholarship worked in medieval Islam. So these are basically the additional information that the portal provides. Of course, our main, I, this is not our major task. As I said, our major task is just making accessible the metadata of the manuscripts. And if um, there is a digital copy in the institution, in the owner institution, we connect these metadata with that, uh, with that um, uh, digital copy. Yeah, so this is our major task. But yeah, this is what um, what additionally uh, the portal uh, um, basically offers. Yeah, I okay. hope I understood the 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 question correctly. <laughs> okay, is, no problem, Doctor Yanis. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I sorry, I can also uh, just again uh, uh, say that. Um, the questions can be asked in Arabic and also in uh, Indonesian. Uh, our, my colleague is here, so he can speak. He can speak the language. He can, yeah, he can answer you know, the questions. Okay. Uh, maybe for all the participants, can give a question not only uh, by Arabic or English language, mm -hmm. but also in Indonesia, uh, because mm -hmm. um, Sir Essi Hemstein uh, will be help uh, you, mm -hmm. yeah, to translate it uh, to Dr. Yonis. Great, great. great. Okay, Dr. Yonis, uh, the next question is from Afdel. 
Oke, okay, halo Afdal. You raising yeah. your hand. Assalamualaikum everyone. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, good afternoon Dr. Yunus. Thank you for sharing your knowledge about manuscripts and information about Kalamos. Uh, I'm interested in asking about Kalamos in particular. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Kalamos uh, can help us cataloging manuscripts which can have so many versions of metadata from various owners uh, like you showed in your presentation and Kalamos helps it uh, to put it in uniformity. And as far as I know, in, in putting data in catalog, we have several guidebook to help us keep the data variety well structured. Like for example, when I catalog library materials, I follow Anglo-American cataloging rules or AACR. Uh, my question is, how do you ensure the uniformity of metadata in Kalamos? Is there a standardized guide on how to catalog a manuscript to Kalamos? Or does Kalamos follow any cataloging rules? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much for, for the, the very important question. That is true. Uh, basically, we try to, um, to harmonize and unify the metadata of uh, various manuscripts, which have basically different uh, versions of a title or different versions of the name of a person. Um, this question basically is uh, a question for, who, who, uh, for a person who specializes in library sciences. I'm not probably the best person to answer it, but I try. I try to my best to to answer. And if um, my colleague Dr. Hanstein would like to add something, he's because he's a librarian basically uh, as well. Um, it, that is true. What we follow is actually the rules of the German National Library. First and for, uh, foremost, in the portal in Kalamos, yeah. So basically now, right, uh, right now, if you search for a specific manuscript, the best result that you can get is in German. Yeah, but also at the same time, we try our best to, um, to do the same thing for English versions. We are following also the rules of uh, the Library of Congress. So for example, um, in the case of authority files that I showed you, in the case we don't have any authority file from the National, German National Library, we import the uh, authority files from the American, American uh, the Library of Congress of America. Uh, so basically, this is how we try to harmonize um, the data. Um, I think Calamos, um, Basically, I don't know, um, this is Dr. Hanstein can uh, answer better, it was basically a thought to connect, firstly, the collections in Germany, and then also in the German, German speaking world, as I said, in Austria and Switzerland, but also other, other collections in other in, uh, countries who are interested. Of course, if somebody would build a portal or a database for all manuscript collections around the world, then um, this is something, this is extremely large project. And of course, we should think up, uh, um, uh, we should think about uh, like other solutions. But um, we follow also the rules of the Library of Congress and uh, National uh, Library of uh, Germany, yeah, for the English version of the portal and the Arabic version of the portal. The version that I uh, showed in my presentation is the German version, is, sorry, the Arabic version, but the, sorry, the English version I meant. And uh, the German version is also available for the users. Um, an Arabic version for the for those who don't uh, who use basically the Arabic as the language of uh, knowledge in the Islamic world is also uh, thought to be available 
but mostly we focus because the time is basically limited and we just have three years time to make the entries for over 22,000 manuscripts and more and more than that. Yeah, so the time is limited. So basically we focus on the uh, German and Arabic uh, and English now. But uh, I suppose that later will be probably other projects which focus on this uh, uniformity and harmony of data. For example, you have Arabic version for all names, for the names of the authors and, and, uh, and the uh, scribes, for example. Yeah, so that if a person just enter, for example, Bukhari in, in Arabic script, there, uh, there won't be any problem. He will have the same result as, as a, a person who enters in German uh, transcript or in English transcript, uh, uh, tr in German transcription or uh, English transcription of the name of Bukhari. Yeah. I hope I was able to answer the question, uh, Doctor. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yunus, for your answer. Okay, uh, for all participants, yeah, for another participant who want to give your uh, question directly. Please. Please. Okay, any another questions? Okay, uh, maybe I want to ask you uh, something, please. Dr. Yunus. Uh, could I? Yes, sure, sure, please. Okay. Uh, I see uh, in the portal of Columbus, there are so many manuscripts, yeah. Uh, but sure. are there any specific criteria from the manuscripts, yeah, that can be entered in the Columbus portal? Mm. Uh, yes, this is a good question. I, 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 I'm really sorry that I don't know what happened here. I cannot share my screen. But, but um, uh, yes, of course, there's also the possibility to just search, for example, for the illustrations in manuscript. Yeah, the possibility is there, of course, not for all collections and not for all manuscripts. But previously, there was a project uh, in which uh, one a German scholar basically tried to describe all manuscripts with illustrations in the collection of Berlin, in Berlin collection, in the Stable Library of Berlin. Now these information are available. So if, for example, you're looking for an illustration of an angel, for example, or for example, um, yeah, a holy figure, for example, you can just simply search in the portal mm -hmm. and just find the illustrations. So it's not just the simple metadata of um, manuscripts or the digital versions, but also the um, um, illustrations. Yeah. Another possibility is that, um, another possibility is for example, to find information about the book bindings. This is also something very interesting for those who study codicology because they are interested in the materiality of the manuscript as well. Yeah, so there are uh, uh, pictures of the book bindings in the manuscript, in the, in the portal, sorry, of manuscripts in the portal. But as I said, not, not for all manuscripts, you know. It depends on the institution um, uh, with, with, with which we are working. If they provide these information, these data, then they will be accessible. For the Berlin collection, as I said, they are already available and you can search. Yeah. The search, of course, can be confined to language, as I said, can be confined, for example, to the ink color, can be, you know, so it's a lot of possibilities to um, um, to to do research, yeah. Depending on in, on which aspect of manuscript a person is interested. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Dr. Yanis. Yeah. Uh, 
in my opinion, yeah, I think uh, the best thing from uh, the portal Qualamus in can be share the information, yeah, uh, the important information, especially for uh, the researchers that uh, have concern about the manuscript. So I think it can be a uh, good idea for the many institution in Indonesia uh, in museum or archive maybe uh, to make a same portal or same uh, facility from database yeah uh, in the manuscript mm -hmm. like a columnus mm -hmm. that is true yes I, I'm, I'm sure I mean I myself as I said so I'm, I'm, I'm coming originally from Iran um, uh, but I'm, I'm sure the the this the, the columnus will be will be um, perceived basically also in the Islamic world as well because um, it, it basically for example, at least in Germany it provides the information about uh, all collections basically literally all collections so you don't need to travel to that country to and yes, ask for example yeah you, you can just uh, send a message if there's not a, a digital copy or if a digital copy most of the time is free for example in the case of Berlin it's free I just showed you uh, the and digital copy of a manuscript, you can just simply download it. So it will be received in various countries. And for example, in the case of collections from Indonesia, now everybody around the world can simply um, use them, contact them, uh, access them and, and use them in the research. Yeah, that is completely true, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, Dr. Yanis, we have uh, one mm -hmm. question is again in the chat. Uh, it comes from Gadis Normalita. Greetings, Mr. Yanis and Mr. Henstein. I have a question. Is there any copyright issues ever happened when connect the Columbus metadata to digital full manuscript from other institution? Mm. Um, as far as I know, um, because actually we cooperate, so they they allow us to to a link to provide a link. You know, when we have a metadata from an institution, it means that they also uh, allow us to connect this uh, data that we have with the digital copy. The digital copy is not in Calamos. Calamos has just the metadata, and Calamos just tells the users. There is a link here. There is so what is in Calamus is just the picture that you saw. If you click on the picture, then you will be in the host institution. For example, you will be in in Indonesia, or you will be in, uh, for example, in Freiburg in in, in other institutions, depending on uh, who is the host. Yeah, we just host here the metadata. Yeah, and as long as we cooperate with them. Uh, they allow us to provide the uh, users, yeah, with this information that there is a digital copy and you can use it, yeah. Uh, so, but I don't know. Probably Mr. Hanstein uh, can add uh, something to my answer. Okay, Mr. Hansons, uh, please. Yeah, Tanam Bhasan Nisa Zajayam. Um, di, di Eropa, semua orang sudah mempunyai pendirian cukup terbuka terhadap dengan copyright dan semua itu. Dan semua perpustakaan nasional dan semua bahkan uh, koleksi pribadi, mereka biarkan semua naskah yang didigitalisasi boleh di-download dan boleh dipakai untuk uh, uh, ya untuk urusan pribadi untuk bisnis tapi juga untuk bisnis jadi itu semua sudah bebas jadi sebenarnya um, semua yang yang menyangkut gambar scan naskah itu semua sudah bebas tidak ada copyright dan apalagi dengan meta data dengan deskripsinya itu ya itu free jadi tidak ada masalah dengan copyright sama sekali dan apalagi um, kebanyakan katalog yang yang kami transfer itu katalog dari abad ke-19 dan tentu saja tidak ada copyright lagi. Oke, 
Okay, thank you very much for your additional answer, Mr. Henston. Okay, so uh, any participants who want to give response or question to Dr. Yones? Boleh dengan bahasa Indonesia ya. <laughs> okay. Or maybe uh, in Arabic language. Yes, of course. Okay, uh, I think there is no question from the all participants, Mr. Jones. Uh, so I will close this virtual seminar. Thank you very much uh, for Dr. Jones for your informative and interesting uh, material for us. Uh, but before I close uh, this virtual seminar, I invite for all participants to take a picture together. Okay, so okay. you can turn on your camera first. Okay, yes. Yeah, maybe the committee uh, can help us to capture our picture. Okay. Okay, there are five slides. Yeah. Okay, you can turn on your camera. Um, my camera is on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, for another right. person, Dr. Yanis, yeah, for all uh, oh, participants. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry, right. sorry. Okay. okay. Let's start on with the first slide. For the, okay. Okay. And the second, one, two, and three. And the third slide. Okay. The four. And last one. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the committee. Okay, uh, actually, I'm so sorry for Dr. Yonis because I forgot to uh, ask your conclusion. Maybe you uh, have uh, some conclusion for us about uh, our material today. Um, um, yeah, the concluding uh, word would be that uh, I think Calamos is a great opportunity for many scholars around the world who work with manuscripts as philologist or historian, but also those who are interested in the ecological aspects. Yeah. As I said, I would I wanted basically to show you some pictures from the illustrations and from the book bindings, but unfortunately I don't know what it didn't work. So it's not just for historians and uh, philologists, but also for those who are interested in the materiality of the manuscript. Yeah. And I think it's a great opportunity for yeah, connecting uh, researchers together, institutions together. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think uh, there are one question uh, for oh, for you. How we how we can contact Columbus or Dr. Yonas? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, our our website is not, I mean our uh, portal is not online. Yes. Now, yeah, you can you can always I think you can write to Dr. Hanstein um, or to me as well if there's a specific question. That, as I said, Dr. Hanstein is one of the um, one of the uh, 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 leaders of the project, you know, and uh, so he can he knows better than exactly. So this is the website of the Calamos. You find uh, further information there. Also, uh, you can follow us in Twitter and. Uh, pose a question there and our colleague, my colleagues, two of my colleagues who are supervising the uh, account will react to the questions. Yeah. I mean, so this, this is the uh, address. You will see um, a page, but it's not the real uh, um, portal as I showed you today. Yeah. But also contact Dr. Hanshan or, or me if there's a certain question. 
Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yunus. Uh, thank, thank you, you once again for you and for Dr. or Mr. Hansen uh, and for all participants uh, for their very active participation today. Okay, finally, uh, I will close this virtual seminar and see you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yunus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah, Mr. Hanston. Pak Tora, terima kasih banyak. Ya, yeah. uh, Dr. Yunus, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ya, sama-sama. Sama-sama, Pak Tora. Ya. Thank you. I hope I could uh, visit uh, Stad Bibliotek soon in the future to come. Mudah-mudahan. Kami menunggu. <laughs> <laughs> ya, yeah, pasti. Okay. Salam untuk semua teman di Tiwin ya. Ya, ya, terima kasih. Tadi Pak Maharsi kayaknya ada tadi. Oh, saya nggak lihat, sayang. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Nah, ini uh, pesertanya uh, cukup banyak tadi. Ya, bahkan ada yang dari Palembang, dari mana tadi? Pencana kara. Oh, uh, banyak, banyak. Betul. Wow, menarik sekali. Oke, mungkin bisa ditutup zoom-nya untuk panitia. Oke, terima kasih. Terima kasih semuanya.